friend. Welcome or welcome back to this channel. This week was a super fun week for me. I was able to just bake and not think about anything else and that I've found is probably my favorite thing to do. So as you can see, pulling out the stand mixer, we're getting really serious with this. And our first recipe is going to be the pretzels that we're going to be making further down the line in this video. So I'm just grabbing some bread flour. I'll put the exact measurements or the exact recipe that I found because none of these are mine. I want to put that out there. I do not have the brains to think of a recipe that is as intense or inclusive <laughs> as this. So I will put all the recipes that I use down below. They are fantastic. They go really in depth of experiences that they found on how to make the best product and um, I was able to not mess up entirely and end up with a really nice result. So I just poured the bread flour and now I'm going to measure out my milk, pour that in. Um, all of these recipes are sourdough discard. I have a plethora, an absolute crazy amount. I have nearly two cups full of sourdough discard which I never have or I've never had before. I didn't say in my last video because it didn't feel right, but my husband actually did bake my second version of the sourdough starter that I made in the first video, so I had to start again. We're on batch number three, but I think, you know, save the best for last. Now I am just measuring out the butter, not probably the best way, and I'm sure there might have been better ways and you might have some better ways for me, um, but this is all I thought of in the moment, and I'm... Um, it got me in the same place. So measuring out the butter, putting it all into the mixing bowl as I'm going to be using that sand mixer that I told you about. I just baked a sourdough loaf. I tried the ice cube method. I think I like it. I'm not quite sure. If you're unfamiliar with the ice cube method, you just put ice cubes at the bottom of your Dutch oven and then when you're baking it, the steam is supposed to be surrounding the bread versus just kind of be encapsulated by the Dutch oven. It's supposed to just kind of permeate the entire loaf versus just the outside or that's my impression of it. And I think it did a better job. But as you can see, it's really, really light, which is what I wanted. I did I pulled it out quicker. I'd also changed the time on that loaf that I baked. It wasn't the original video that I had posted. Again, I was trying some things out. I feel like I'm at the stage now where I can try things out which is exciting, but also terrifying because <laughs> sometimes I don't want to change things. I like the way that they are. And I didn't really like this bread. I didn't reach for this bread after I made it. I'll be honest, I never ate it again. So a little bit of a waste, but it was worth a try. Now I know. Before I started talking, I was measuring out 15 grams of salt and I thought that might be boring for you all. So I just cut that clip and now I'm adding, I believe, half a cup of discard here. And then I'm setting up the mixer so I can mix that together. Again, I'll have this recipe down below. I don't remember the exact measurements of it and I'm not going to pretend to. I'm honestly here just to kind of walk you through what I'm doing as I'm doing it since I'm not actually speaking in the moment. Now this is an overnight recipe which is why the lighting has changed when I was filming that portion. As you saw, I mixed it together. I kneaded it together using the dough hook on my mixer and then I put it in a, another bowl to rest overnight. I originally put the tea towel on it that I normally use. You've seen me use before, but I decided, at least based on the video that I saw, my Banneton bin cloth holder, I don't know what you'd call it, would work best. So I just had that sitting there. And then now we are on the weekend. It is Saturday morning. I am super stoked to be making another recipe of Stephanie's. This is the cinnamon rolls and I've been craving cinnamon rolls for probably about a week since I thought about making these. So I was super excited to make these this day and actually I'd made these before. It was my first sourdough discard recipe that I followed and I was so excited that I actually skipped over probably three to four steps and it made a huge difference as you can imagine if you're just skipping through steps. Um, but this one turned out much, much better and it was so flaky, so gooey, so good to eat. I was just over the moon. So here you can see I'm preheating my oven. I put the cast iron skillet in the oven as it's preheating. I want there to be no dramatic change when I'm putting in the dough to where it immediately fries it. I want it to be at the temperature that it's gonna stay in and be baked in. So I just wanted to get familiar with that. I 
ran out of flour. I'm going to be honest. I didn't plan for this video. I was just super excited to actually make any of these recipes. So I didn't plan ahead. I ran out of flour. I thought I had enough. I started filming and I realized that I was 100 grams short. And sometimes I will wing it and sometimes I'll let it happen and just, you know, pray and hope for the best in the end. But this one, I was like, 100 grams, that's a lot. I can't do that. So I had already measured a good portion of the flour that I needed for this in that white bowl that you saw me getting the cups out of. So that's what that is. Um, it's not something I made. It's not something I had set aside, you know, thoughtfully. I just simply ran out of flour and was too lazy to put it in a bag. <laughs> And that's okay. You're not always going to have the best day of baking and that's totally okay. And that day I feel like, honestly, I felt like I could not win on that day. I, I don't know what happened. I just, every time I set up for something, it just didn't work. And that was, that was kind of my final thing that happened that I was like, okay, I just need to try again tomorrow. And that's exactly what I did. I tried again the next day and it was perfectly fine. And I had a better result than I would have had. And I was super happy with it. So just encouraging you, if you are discouraged, if you're going through something and it seems like you're having a bad day, you have tomorrow. And that in itself is a luxury, but you have tomorrow to try again. And trying again is the most important thing. So as you saw here, I am following Stephanie's brilliant idea of not dicing in all the butter. I didn't know when I f was first making this or the second time around that I was actually making a rough puff pastry, which by the way, Great British Baking Show is my life. And knowing this now, I am still kind of giddy thinking that I actually pulled this off. I always thought that creating pastry was going to be something that I needed, you know, 15 years of experience to do. And... I did it. I was so proud of myself. But as you saw, I was grating butter. It might seem weird, but if you think about it, it's pretty ingenious. You just literally take a grater. I have um, that tool that I never use and I figured I would give it use this time around and it actually worked pretty well. Um, but you could just use a regular grater. Totally fine. Grated the amount, which I think is three fourths of a cup, if I'm not incorrect in saying that, of butter. And then literally just slowly incorporated that into the flour mixture that I had. And now I'm adding a full cup of discard, which, you know, in my first video, I get too excited and I actually don't ever have a full cup. So when I had this full cup, I was ecstatic. <laughs> I was like, yes, finally something's going to go right in my baking. It's not going to be, you know, just a hope and a prayer. Plus from that starter, I then added a whole egg and then a half a cup of milk. I tend to steer clear of gluten. I know this is funny watching me bake. I s usually steer clear of gluten and dairy and soy. And so that is what started this whole sourdough journey. I originally just had the dream of baking things for people and just giving it away. And I've totally done that and I love it. It is honestly like my greatest achievement every time I, I can give something to someone. But I, I started this specifically sourdough because... I was told that, you know, the way that sourdough is fermented and created is tolerable or can be tolerable for people who are gluten sensitive, not people who are, you know, gluten intolerant with celiac disease. I don't think, and I'm not going to quote or claim that that is the truth, but for me, I'm actually able to eat this bread and it is so cool. Moving forward, I am going to try to be more conscious of my dietary needs because sometimes I just don't feel as good as I used to when I'm baking and that just might be, you know, the copious amounts of butter or dairy. So I combined all of the ingredients together, rolled it out just a little bit or it kneaded it out and then rolled it out and that was as far as I went in the last iteration of this cinnamon roll journey. Um, reading further into the instructions, I realized that I needed to actually try fold. So make a little pamphlet with my dough and then roll that out three more times. I had just stopped at the initial and I was getting, when me and my husband ate this, we would get like tart pockets in our mouths that would literally like take our breath away it was the crazy experience and I was like oh maybe I just didn't mix it well enough or maybe I just did it incorrectly I'm not quite sure no I just had large chunks of salted butter that I was chewing on <laughs> because I didn't know that I needed to trifold and then 
roll out again and then try fold and roll out again so definitely read your instructions if you learn anything from this video please 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 just check the directions again here i made the mixture for the cinnamon filling off camera it was just a little too messy for me to film so i'm spreading that evenly across the entire roll of dough that i have and her suggestion which was genius in my opinion is at this point the butter's starting to get a little bit warmer if I, again, had known what I was making, I would have put it in the fridge to let it cool down and get f fully back to chilled level because I know puff pastry does need to be rolled out at its coldest temperature. Otherwise, you see what happens. It, it sticks to the surface. It doesn't matter how much flour you use. Butter is melting because there's copious amounts of butter in there and it can just affect the overall bake. So next time I'll definitely do that, but I just used a scraper and it worked totally fine. Made sure that the dough wasn't coming apart as much as it could have gone apart. <laughs> and then here I am doing the funnest part of this. I'm still super geeked looking at this because it just looks so pretty and so clean. I'm using a thread from my sewing machine upstairs. I had um, thread that came with my machine and it doesn't actually work for my machine. So now it is exclusively baking thread. And I am super pumped about that, but I'm just using some thread and then cutting each one about an inch, I would say, of dough. And you should get 10 to 12 pieces. I believe I eked out 12, but because I didn't have like enough mixture fully coated, there was some bits that it wasn't actually full of any mixture. But here you can see I'm just taking all the pieces that I cut and then putting it in the skillet that I just pulled out of the oven because it is at... 425 now i found that sourdough just 425 went into out 425 that is the sweet spot on temperature now i did say i nearly got this right and this is where i went wrong i started making the frosting for this as it was baking so i could immediately pour it over i did not slowly add anything at different increments like it was suggested in the instructions i just mixed it all together in a bowl and said okay cool and that's what led to these chunks Number two, I also believe I have old powdered sugar because I can't remember the last time I actually bought powdered sugar. So it is not curdled. It just is probably old powdered sugar and the fact that I didn't read the instructions properly. But it still turned out really, really good. I had two. My husband had two. And we had a great time. Now, moving on, it is still the same day, as you can see, but it's the next day from when we first created this pretzel dough. So I am pulling it out of its little bowl and then kneading it for a good bit. Kneading is my favorite part. It just makes me feel like I am truly a baker. And I know that sounds silly, but I used to work in a bakery and I never actually got to do any of the baking or decorating for the cakes. I was the middleman. I just kind of sold all the things that we sold in the bakery. And I'd always dreamed of being a baker and just rolling out and kneading dough. So getting to live this out in a way is so special. And I just have moments like that where I'm like, wow, I actually did it. Or I'm doing it now. I didn't need, you know, a job to hire me to make me feel like I can do something. I'm just capable by trying. And so are you. Don't forget that. Now, before I get too sappy, we are <laughs> we are cutting the dough. Um, in the video, I believe she suggests 95 grams. She is German. She is amazing. She is funny. I loved her video and her explanation on her instructions. Again, I'll link her down below or link the video and the instructions recipe. All of the things down below. So I think I had 95 grams. Again, I'll, I'll link it and I'll have the exact ones. But I'm just rolling out this dough to make... Ah! look how cute they are make these little pretzels i was so proud i really thought the longer i would roll them out the bigger i would get that's not the case i had already set the size of them by <laughs> cutting out the 95 grams i don't know why i didn't think of that but they're still super precious and i loved the way that they looked in her video she uses lye i've actually never heard of lye before but she did suggest that you could do um a quart of boiling water with a quarter cup of baking soda so that's exactly what I did and it worked out perfectly next time I do discard bagels I'm gonna try this because I did a water bath um where you do like water and brown sugar and it just first of all it burnt like the water burnt I don't know how that works um the water burnt and all of the bagels came out mushy whereas these were nice and firm they they did exactly what they're supposed to do not following the recipe here I decided to egg wash it I don't have anything to put the egg wash 
on things. So I just used a spoon and that was my first mistake. Wouldn't recommend. Uh, second mistake, putting on cinnamon sugar here. Great idea in theory. I thought I was Annie Ann. I'm not Annie Ann. I am an off-brand because <laughs> these just tasted like regular pretzels with cinnamon on top. I mean, I ate them nonetheless. They are pretzels. So now adding this to the oven for 20 minutes. My oven's a little different. Like I've said before, every oven's different. Um, so this only took me 15 minutes and they were this color, which I felt like was a good time to pull them out. I didn't show you, but I did slice the bottoms of the pretzels so they would have places to expand so they didn't explode in the oven. But yeah, that's how they turned out and they were so stinking good. Now we are moving on to the final thing that we're making. This, spoiler alert, was a fail. It was actually awful. Would not recommend doing what I did. It got to the point where I was just like, I just need to film this and get it done with. And that is a bad attitude to have. So my end result does show that, but I still eat it every morning and it tastes really good. But we're making English muffins, which I have always enjoyed eating and I love the taste of them. So super excited to think that I could make this on my own at home. That was something I'd never thought of and I was just searching discard recipes and this came up and I automatically clicked it and said I'm making that. So we are setting that up. I did four ounces of medium warm to kind of hottish water. You know how I am with my hot water. Um, put it in the mixing bowl because we are going to be mixing it again. And then I did two teaspoons of active yeast. That's what I you saw me putting in that bowl before as well as some salt. And then I mixed that all together. And then I try to be really cool and I did a time lapse. I promise I'm not running back and forth in my kitchen that fast. <laughs> the lighting just kind of makes it look like that from the time lapse but I thought that was super cool to see the bloom I've always wanted to see it for myself now we are moving into all-purpose flour I believe you need like 370 grams of this 360 yep 360 grams I'm a little over I'm gonna pull it out the extra five grams that I have in there and then I'm gonna add a teaspoon or a tablespoon of salt here and then put it in the mixer I did add sourdough discard and I added too much i was really worried about not getting it in frame and I spilled double maybe triple the amount that it accounted for so once I pull this dough out you can see it is super sticky gooey wet just not the consistency that you would want I'm going to take it out of the bowl because I need to add cooking spray to it so it grows but you can see like it is not forming anything it is just it's like wet play-doh I don't really know how else to describe it but it's not the consistency it should be so um, definitely follow the recipe as I've mentioned previously in this video not my strong suit we were doing the dishes so I didn't actually have my cookie sheet I just used a pizza sheet that we had it was totally fine adding cornmeal to it I also bought the wrong type of cornmeal but that's okay adding flour to my counter and then I'm gonna pull out the dough and then split it evenly or semi evenly into um, 10 pieces so then I can form them into their little dough balls pulling that out onto the counter now as you can see still not the consistency it should be there's just too much discard in there and that's okay it's again it turned out fine but I would like to try this recipe again and see what that dough should feel like i've gotten to the point now where i can feel what the dough should feel like and what it shouldn't feel like and i immediately knew when i pulled this out the first time that this was not good dough again this is all a learning journey i'm not going to be perfect the first time and i have to remind myself of that all the time that this is just me trying things and that's okay that it doesn't come out you know amazing every single time it's just the fact that i i tried i should have taken a, a page out of my german friend's book here and actually measured out exact measurements for the dough as you can see some are a little bit smaller some a little bit bigger off camera I just kind of try to make them as equal as possible so they wouldn't all turn out weird but now I'm, I'm forming them into dough balls and then once I've formed them made them as smooth as possible again working with nearly impossible dough here I would say it's like gum that's probably the best way I could describe that yeah it, it was almost like gum trying to form gum into the best ball that I can that's smooth and then I'm just going to pat it down so it makes that shape and then put it in the cornmeal and then I'm going to take my pan I should have used a skillet again another thing I just know to do for next time um, use my cast iron skillet because I think it just would have had an overall better bake but I'm putting it on my regular pan at 
medium to medium high. This burner gets really, really hot, so it's kind of a different temperature every time. I either have to add more or take away whenever there's a, a recipe that I'm following. So medium to medium high, I'd say. And then I let it sit for f four minutes instead of the five to seven that was suggested because, again, it gets really hot. Covered it with... Um, a little cover so the steam would build and then it, it could make that little poof that it needs to so you can actually cut it and it's not a flat disc and then flipped it put that cover back on and let it sit for another four minutes or let it cook for another four minutes and then I had these beautiful babies and I was so proud of them please let me know if you have any discard recipes that you swear by or you want me to try next I have again two cups of sourdough discard sitting in my fridge that I am itching to use so if you have any suggestions please let me know and we'll see you in my next video